Hello all. Welcome to this course on getting started with Git. I'm Jayant. I'll be the instructor for this course and take you to the journey of different Git basic. So without further delay, let's get started. What is Git? Free and open source version control system. It is most widely used by the developer community. Then what is a version control system? Version control system is a way to track code changes or any documentation while developing a software by various stakeholders. Now let's see what is the difference between Git and GitHub. Git is the tool to track your changes, but GitHub is where the codes are hosted and can be shared among different stakeholders. In the next lecture, we'll see some Git concepts. Let's see some Git concepts. First one is clone. It brings or download a repository which is hosted remotely to your local machine, ARD. ARD is used to track the files and any changes. Then commit. Commit saves the files to Git locally. Push is used to upload all the Git commits to a remote repository. Pull. It is the opposite activity of push. It downloads the changes from remote repository to a machine. And the last one is merge. It is used to merge the changes from one branch to another. In the next lectures, we'll see how we can use this concept using different Git commands. Git initialization. In this section, we'll see how we can create a repository in GitHub from the browser. In this section, we'll see how we can create a repository using GitHub and then try to access that repository. Open your browser, sign in to github.com. If, if you do not have an account, create an account on GitHub and then sign in to. You can see here a lot of repository available. Let's create a new repository by clicking on this new. We're not using any kind of template. Let's give it a repository name as git demo. Give some description, it's for demo. Make it as public so that others can see it. If you want to make it as private, then nobody can see it. You can use it internally. Then let's initialize a readme file to describe our repository. Git ignore is used to ignore the compiled files to be excluded from Git post. Let's give Python as our language so that any compiled file from Python won't be pushed to our repository. Then we have to give a license. You can also choose none of the licenses for now, let's say I'm choosing GNU public license. You can read the license agreements from the info option. Let's create a repository. Here you see our repository is created with git ignore file, then license and readme file. Let's edit this file, our first edit. After you have edited, then commit the changes. You can see your default comment is here if you want to add some add some comment you can add it here otherwise just make it commit changes so the changes will be available in the github repository to see the entire history of changes go to the commits here you can see whatever commits we have done is updated in this way you can see the entire history of the commits if you click on this comment here you will see plus like symbol means anything you add will be given under plus and anything is removed will be given as minus so a lot of plus minus things you'll be seeing in the commit logs so our repository is created let's try to check out this repository on our local machine first we need to find out whether git is installed or not in linux or mac machines it is installed by default otherwise you, you can download git and install it to check whether git is installed type git minus minus version it shows the version of git installed on the system now let's clone the repository to clone the repository go to the repository on github here is a tab called clone or download you can select the link move into your terminal for cloning the command is git clone and paste the link it is starting to clone it so here you see your git demo repository is available here you can see the file whatever changes we have added in github is available in our local system now let's say we want to 
create a repository from command line. To do this, the com you can use the command called git init. Let's create a directory, git demo one. Go to the directory, type git init. It initialized an empty git repository in this location. If you do ls in this directory, you will see nothing. But if you do ls minus a, you'll see some hidden file called dot git. Let's see what are the contents of dot git. Here you see some config is there, description file and objects references are there. These are just holding the information of your repositories. Let's do git status here. There is no file here. Let's add a new file called hello.html. Now if you do the git status, you'll see a new file is being added. Let's try to configure the git first before committing any changes. To configure, we need to provide two things. First is name and second one is email ID. This is just used for tracking who made what changes. This is not for login purpose. For login purpose, you need your GitHub account that can be used when committing the changes. So the command for configure is git config minus minus global that will be applicable to your enter system user dot name equal to user dot name within quote your name test user then similarly user dot email that's a test user at the rate gmail.com now the configs are applied let's let's try to commit the changes git add some dot html file git commit minus m demo file if you do git status now the change is committed to verify our configs are applied or not try git log in git log command output you can see the author is test user with email id test user at the rate gmail.com that's how you can configure git now another feature in git called git fork suppose we want to contribute to some open source project. For that, we need to follow a different type of workflow. This can be done through the process of pull request. For that, first we need to fork that repository to which you want to contribute. To do that, go to any open source repository. Here you see an option called fork. Let's fork it by clicking this tab. Now here you see the same project is cloned to my GitHub account. So it is exactly same copy of the open source project and it is copied to my GitHub account. It makes your own version. The URL says your username, then the repository name. After that, you can make whatever changes you want to do in this port repository and then finally, request the owner of the project for merging the changes through pull request. Then concerned developer or author will review your project or review your comments, then provide approval for whether merging or reject the PR. In the next lecture, we'll see how we can do local changes for Git. Let's see how we can do local changes with Git. We have our file called hello.py. Let's try to commit this file. If you do a git status, you'll see we have a new untracked file called hello.py. If you do git branch, it will show currently we are in master branch. The star indicates the branch you are currently in. Since we have only one branch available, currently it is showing only master. Let's try to let's try to add this file. To add a file, the command is git add hello.py if you do git status again it will show the new file changes is here and it is ready to be committed now let's check what is the difference we are trying to push to our repository by using the command git diff minus minus test it will show the new file is hello.py since it is a new file all the lines are in plus.
if it was an existing file then it will show what are the lines are replaced what are the lines added everything will be shown in this staging information in case there are multiple files you can also use git add dot means current directory so it will do all the stagings in your current directory now let's do grid status again it will show a new file each stage to be committed let's commit the file git commit minus m here we'll be providing some comment our hello world script so here you will see our hello world script is a comment and one file is changed four lines are inserted and it is created now these changes are created in a local repository so if you do a git status again it will show your branch is ahead of origin master by one commit so the commit is local you need to add a git push to add this changes to your remote repository in the next lecture we'll see how we can do remote push git update and publish whatever changes we have done so far as is related to local now let's see how our local changes will be available to public or our github repository let's switch over to our terminal so if we do a git status here we'll be saying we have the commit to be pushed push that commit remote repository the command is git push it is showing the changes are being published to our remote repository at github now let's go to the browser in the github let's try to refresh this browser here you will see our hello.py file is committed to our remote repository in this way you can publish your local work to remote github repository let's see some other git remote commands to download data from remote repository the command would be git fetch so since we have all the data updated so it is not fetching anything to check out a branch from a remote repository the command is git check out then branch name feature slash test let's say we have a branch called feature slash test so you you see here the branch is switched to feature slash test if you do a git branch command here star is redirecting to feature test so our current branch is feature slash test next we'll try to pull all the changes from remote branch and merge it to head to do that the command is git pull it is showing to set the upstream for this we'll set the upstream by giving git branch set upstream to origin slash master then our branch is feature slash test so it is now our branch feature test is set for tracking to a remote branch called master from origin so let's now try to git pull it shows already our branch is up to date now let's try to create a branch called git uh, test one to do this the command is git checkout minus p test one that's our new branch is test one so we have created a new branch here called test one let's try to edit something for this branch for branch test one then we'll be adding this file then commit it and then finally push it so while pushing it is showing me the warning of your upstream branch is not set so for any branch we need to set a upstream branch using command git push minus u origin test one now here our changes are pushed to a remote branch called test one now let's say our work is done and we'll be deleting the branch to delete a branch the command is git git branch minus tr origin slash test one so it shows deleted the remote tracking branch called origin slash test one these are the commands you can use for tracking remote branches like uh, pulling data from rem uh, pulling data remotely pushing data remotely deleting a branch or creating a branch in the next lecture we'll see branching and tagging feature of git branching and tagging in git so master is the default branch on the git let's say we have a project where multiple people are working on this we have multiple commits then there is a new feature and the person started working on this he will create another branch from the master branch and start work on this branch at this instance both the branches will have the same code 
with work in progress both the branches will move ahead with further commits without knowing each other this is said because the person working on the feature branch doesn't want to break the code in the master branch he just want to develop everything correctly and finally he will be merging his changes in the local branch to the master branch let's move ahead to the terminal to try it out we get branch to check we are currently on master branch let's check out our feature branch git check out feature slash test so now we are in the feature branch git check out is basically used to switch from one branch to another let's change something in this feature branch and then commit and push it let's open the file called hello.figy let's change the value of a to 10 our changes added let's also change something in the readme file change in script git status will show our on tag master changes will add this will stage this using git add dot our changes are staged let's commit it git commit minus m script change then we'll do git push origin feature slash test so changes are pushed remotely to our branch called feature slash test now let's verify whether our changes in both the branches is different or not here in our feature slash test branch our a, a value equal to 10 let's check out master here you'll see the a value is 5 so the file is different in both the branches in next lecture we'll see how we can merge the changes from one branch to another branch before that we'll see how we can do branch tagging in git to list all the branches we have added to our remote repository the command is git branch minus a v it is so whatever branches we have added locally remotely everything in the list now, what is tagging tagging is something if you want to mark the current commit as a different tag so the tag can be released for testing or something other activities let's check out our test branch bi script dot sh in this script let's add something echo hello world we'll commit this file commit minus n okay now let's create a tag for this commit git tag hello so our current commit like this hello world script will be marked to this tag called as hello in the next section we'll see how we can do git merge merging in this lecture we'll see how we can merge the changes from one branch to another as of now we have seen we have committed few changes to a branch called feature slash test one now let's see how we can merge the changes in our feature slash test branch to the master branch before that let's check out master so currently we are in master branch let's see what is the difference between the master branch and our feature branch the command git diff then our branch name will show the difference between the master branch and feature branch here you see a lot of difference in the readme file and the new script whatever we have added as well as the python script where we have changed the value now let's merge it to merge the changes to another from another branch the command is git merge then the branch name here you see these are the files which are merged and a new file called script.sh is also created so since the file was not in the master one so it was created new if we do the git status now you see here our branch have all the comments from the feature branch let's do a git post again now all the changes are available in our master branch here you can see our new script is available then our old script is updated with the variable name everything is available in the master branch currently but the best practice to merge anything from a local branch to a master branch is through pull request what is a pull request a pull request is a request to have your code into another branch once the pull request is created anyone can review it then comment on your pull request and you can also add your changes as per the review comment then finally merge it so the basically 
the review process can be done easily using pull request let's see how we can create a pull request let's move into our github repository when you refresh the page you will see a lot of changes added to your different branches called feature slash test and test under test one here you see showing something called compare and pull request let's create it this will create a pull request from feature slash test branch to a master branch then press create pull request so in the pull request tab you will see one of the pull request is created here you can check what are the changes in your branch or in the pull request if you go to the commits here you will see thing is committed if you click on the files changed you will see whatever changes added to the file is added here here you can add whatever review comments looks good but parameterized it so here you see in the commit you have added a comment then the author of this pull request will be implementing these changes and then you'll mark it as resolve then after that you can review this pull request and let's approve it looks good then approve so all checks have been passed this branch has no conflicts with the base branch then you can do a merge of this pull request confirm merge now the pull request is successfully merged with the master branch and it is closed let's go to our code repository we will see the script.sh is merged in the master branch if you open the file you will see changes abc and hello.name is available in the master branch so the pull request is currently merged the and both the branches have the same contents in this way you can use pull request for review purpose this looks quite easy but in real world it is not that much easy while doing a merging or merging a pull request in real world you will see a daemon called merge conflicts it is possible that multiple people working on the same file and git doesn't know which to keep and which to not keep while merging then you need to do the changes manually and push it again that's all about merging in the next lecture we'll see history of commits in git git history using git history you can track the history of git commits to a branch or to a repository using different commands let's switch over to our terminal to check this git log git log command shows all the commits to our branch in a reverse chronological order here you can see all the commits with their hash and with the comments timing the author everything available in the git log to track the history of a file you can do git log minus p file name it shows whatever commits added to this file at what time from which branch by whom everything you can see in the file history using git blame command you can see the total number of changes to a file and done by whom so for this the command is git blame the file name here you see this file has three commits and done by this user at this time and these are the changes that's how you can track changes to a file or to the repository or to the branch using git log command that's all about the history of commits in the next lecture we'll see how we can undo the commits in git undoing commits in git in case you made some mistake in commits we need to reverse those changes this can be done using git reset let's see how how we can undo the commits in git let's open the file let's say we are ma making some mistake here now let's say i have ordered the file name with wrong syntax so now i want to undo the changes to do that the command is git reset file name so it will make the file on stage now the file is no longer no longer staged in git let's say a change is committed when to reset the last commit we think there is some incorrect changes going in the last commit so we went to reset to that last commit to do that 
the command is git reset head till one here head is a pointer to your last commit so now you see last commit is on stretched in the file script.sx so here you see whatever you have done in the previous commit is is unstaged you can also unstage the commits using the hash of any commit to do that first check git log here you see the hashes of different commits let's try to reset a commit to reset a commit using hash the command is git reset then your hash name let's say this one here you see the file is unstaged whatever commit done by this has is unstaged now in this way you can unstage any kind of commit done by in a repository using the feature of git log and git reset one more important command in this category is the git clean command it is used for getting rid of all the untracked files or directories inside your repository this command is more useful when you have accidentally created many files in your git repository for example let, for example let's say you unzipped a compressed file in your git directory in that case it, it will create hundreds of files directories and subdirectories it is not quite convenient to select all those files and direct it from the git for making them unstaged but with git clean command you can clear all those files at once let's check here if we do git status you can see a lot of untracked files and directories are here so inside those directories there would be multiple files it would be very inconvenient to select each and every directory or file to delete from the git repository instead of you can use the command git clean git clean minus df here d stands for directories and f stands for file here you can see it it has done the removal of all the directories which were untracked now check the git status again here our repository is clean our job is done so in this way you can use git clean command to clear whatever untracked directories or files inside your repository that's all about undoing a commit in git and it brings to the end of this course since you are done with all the concepts and uh, different lectures in, in this course let's try to do some hands-on for this exercise log into your github account then create a repository called my demo with some basic uh, readme file then clone that repository to your local system add a script called hello.sh with some print statement and commit and push it then from the master branch create another branch called test check out that branch update the hello.sh file after that commit the changes to test branch and finally create a pull request from test branch to the master branch merge it through the pull request after merging is done check the history of commits in the master branch that's all about this exercise it covers all the topics we have discussed in in this course all the best let's summarize what we have learned in this course first we have learned what is git then different git concepts then we look into how we can initialize git using git github and then terminal or command line then we saw how we can do the local changes in our repository and after that how to do remote changes then we saw how we can do branching and tagging in git repository then we have seen how we can merge changes from one branch to another after that we have seen how we can see the history of commits in a repository and finally and how we can undo the changes in git repository that's all about this mini course on git fundamentals hope you have enjoyed the course and finally a big thank you to all for completing this course